Okay, so today's Daf Yomi is Baba Basra Daf Chafei Baba Basra 25. So this Daf Yomi is dedicated for a Shmir for the Chayolim, a Tzol for the Shmiyim, and a Yeshua for Am Yisrael. The Daf Yomi on the top of 25a in Baba Basra says the following, Marchikin es ha-nevelos ves ha-kvaros ves ha-borski minayir. You have to distance the carcasses of the animals, the, the burial places, now, Rashi says because of the smell, and you have to distance the tannery from the city 50 cubits. You have to distance it by 50 cubits from the city. The Ain Osin Borski El And you only make the the tannery on the eastern side of the city. And the Gemara is going to explain why. Rabbi Kiva says, You can do it in every direction. And uh, Rashi says the eastern side of the city is what the, the Tanakhama says because the eastern wind is not hard. It only comes, it, it usually doesn't blow hard. And so therefore that's the best direction. Whereas Rabbi Kiva says you could do it in any direction, Chutzmi Marava, except for the west. Umarachi Chamisha Mama, and you have to distance it 50 amos in the west. And you going to explain what Rabbi Kiva is actually saying. And in the next part of the mission, we all actually had um, a week ago, it says, Marfikin is a Mishram and a Yerach. When you soak the flax, you have to keep it away from the vegetables, the sacretium and abatzolin, and the leeks from the onions, because they ruin it if they're planted together, the sachardom and advorum, and the mustard seed from the bees, where it's Rabiosi Mati Rachardom. Rabiosi allows it, the mustard seed near the beads, because he says the mustard is bad for the bees, just like the bees are bad for the mustard. Mur asked the question, in Bible, Rabbi Akiva, what's Rabbi Akiva actually saying? Hey, 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 Karma, what's Rabbi Akiva saying? Is he saying, that he could put these things in every direction, except for the West, and in the West, the but in the West, he can do it 50 amos away. Or does it mean in every direction he could put it 50 amos away? Except in the West, he can't put, do it at all. So what's Rabbi Kiva actually saying? And Mar says we have a bright side. Tashma, the Tanya, Rabbi Kiva, Omer, on Kol Ruach, Ol Ose, Ol Marche, Chamisha, Mama. In every direction he could do it for fifty amos away. Chutz mi Marava, they know it's a calling. But in the West he can't do it at all. Neisha he Tadira, because in the West it is Tadira. What does that mean? It says the Gemara, I'm really Rabbi Rav Nachman, my Tadira. What does Tadira mean? Iwema Tadira Beruchos. If you want to say that that direction is always going to have wind flowing, and so therefore the western wind is always blowing. So Vaha Amarav Hanan Baraba Amarav Tawad Ruchos Minash Vos Bacholyom. Doesn't Rav Hanan Baraba say in the name of Rav that four winds blow every day? The Ruach Tsafon is Simkun, and the northern wind blows with all of them. Shall Moai came, if we're not for the war northern wind blowing with all of the other winds, Aina Oam is Kayama Philoshaachas, the other winds would be blowing. Uh, so strong. And Raj says the northern wind is soft and sweet and clear and it calms down the other winds. Viruach drom is kasha mikuan, and the southern wind is the worst. It's so hard and strong. Vilmoi ben nates. And when we're not for the fact that there was a ben nates, which is an angel that it looks like an angel that appears in the image of a nates, if we're not for this ben nates, that angel with the resemblance to a hawk, and I always read it as Ben Nates, a person who davens Nates, sunrise, Shema Mido Macharebes, as a Oam. This, the, if we're not for the Ben Nates that comes and stops the force of the southern wind, it would destroy, and stop the southern wind, it would destroy the whole world. As it states in the verse in Job, as it states, Hami bin Nascha Yaver Nates, Yefroz Kenafavotimon. Is it from your wisdom that the Nates extends its limbs? And spreads its wings to the south. So we see from here that the nate extends its wings and spreads its limbs to the south and stops the force of the wind. So if that's the case, what does it mean, Tadira? It can't mean that the west, it can't mean that the west is Tadira. So what does it mean? So my Tadira, what's the reason why you can't, uh, why you can't put these uh, things in the West. Reason is, that the West is where God always is. God is dwelling in the West. Come and let's give praise to our forefathers because they may known to us 
the proper direction of prayer because it says, the heavenly legions bow down to you. Basically, the sun, the moon, and the stars, they rise in the east and they bow towards the, the west as they set. And since they're bowing to Hashem, we see that they're that the Shlina is in the West. But maybe it's like the sun and and the moon are like a servant who's taking a portion from his master. The And then while he's back, while he's bowing away, he's backing down. Meaning mean, while he's backing away, he's bowing down. So maybe the this shows that well, that that while they're moving west, maybe that indicates that the Shlina is actually in the east. Mara says, okay, Kasha, it's difficulty. Mara says, Rabbi Oshia, Savar Shlina Bukomakam, whereas Rabbi Oshia holds that the divine presence is in every direction. The divine presence is everywhere. The Amar, the Amar, so there's no direct, there's no preference to pray. The Amar Rabbi Oshia, Maidal Sev, what does it mean when it says, Atahu Hashem Livadecha, Atah Asisa Sashemaim, you are Hashem alone, you made the heavens. What does that mean? Shulchecha lo keshulchi basar adam, that your agents, uh, God, are not like the agents of flesh and blood. Shulchi basar adam, the agents of flesh and blood, mean makom shemeshtalchem l'sham achzerim shulchosim. If you send down an agent, it goes back to the place you sent him from. Ava shulchecha lo makom shemeshtalchem but to, but but your agents, God, when you send them to a place, there they there that's where they give their report. They don't have to go back to you, as it states, as it states in the pasuk in Job, birakim Can you send forth barakim lightning, and they will go, and they will say to you, behold, we're here. It doesn't say that they will come and say. They'll go and say, This teaches us a divine presence in every place. And also, Rabbi Shemuel's other position that the divine presence in every place, the Tana, to be Rabbi, Yishmael, like Rabbi Shemuel taught, we know that the divine presence in the divine presence in every place, Shinem, or Hinea, Malach, the Ver, be, you would say, as it states in the Pasuk in Zechariah, the angel that was speaking to me uh, went out, Malach, Acher, Yotzel, Akroso. And another angel went out to greet him. Aharav on him, or don't say it went out behind him. El Lekrasa went out to greet him. This teaches us, Malamei Cheshchina B'Kol Makom. This teaches us the divine presence in, is in every place. But after Rav Sheshesh, Sav Rav Shchina B'Kol Makom, also Rav Sheshesh says, it's done by Rav Sheshesh, Chol Ruchasa Ha'ukman Wabarim Mizrach. Stand up to pray and face any direction except east, which is the direction we actually pray in. Ha'am Mishum Delei Zbe Shchina, Ha'am Mishum Demoro Bamini. Not because there's no Shchina there, but because the 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 minim the, the the sectarians they tell their people to pray to that to the east, and so therefore Rav Sheshu says don't pray to the east. So obviously we know that the Gemara our practice is to pray to the east, and the Gemara Baracho says that we should pray in which the direction of the Temple Mount is. So basically, there's three approaches how to pray: do you pray to the west, do you pray to the east, or do you pray towards the Temple Mount? So. So those are the three opinions. Okay, so the Gemara says, Rabbi Avo, Amar Shechina B'mara. Rabbi Avo says the divine presence in the West. Amar Rabbi Avo, my Oriya. What does it mean when it says Oriya? Avirya means the, the words Avirya, the air of Hashem. And so therefore, that's what Oriya is. So Amar Rav Yehuda, what does it mean when it says, Yarov Kamatar Lakli, Tizal Katal Mercy? What does it mean, Yarov Kamatar Lakli? My teachings drip like the rain. Zuruach Ma'aravis Shabami Arpa Shalmakam. This refers to the Western wind that comes from the nape of the world, the back, the back of the neck of the world. Tizal katal emratzi. My words should flow down like dew. Zuruach tzafonis. This refers to the northern wind. Shemaz shemazelas which devalues gold by by destroying the crops. V'cheinu omer hazalim zav mikis. Those who spend gold freely from the purse. Kasirim alei desha. Zuruach mizrachis. This refers to the eastern wind. Shemisa Eris is called Olam Kisair that destroys the whole world like a demon. 
the Karavivim Ale Esav, Zuroch Jeromis, this refers to the southern wind, Chumala Revivim Magadelas Asavim, which brings up the Revivim, it brings up the, the, the rain showers and causes the grass to grow. Tanya Rebelezer Omer, now on the top of 25b, and this is very, very opaque text, a very, very uh, esoteric text, hard to understand, but we will do the best we can. What does it mean when it says, Olam? What does it mean when we say that? It says, Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Eliezer taught, the Olam, the world, is Dome El Achsadra Udome. The world is like an Achsadra. Achsadra is a structure that is walled on three sides and open on the fourth. That's what Rashi says. So what does it mean that the world is like an Apsadra? The Ruach Tzaphonis, Eina Misobebes, and the northern side is open. The Kiban Sheigia Chama Eitzel Kerem Aravis Tzaphonis. And once the sun comes to the northwest, Nechfefes, the Ola Malam it turns around and goes above the heaven, and then it travels back in the morning. So basically, that's not the way we understand it today with our science, but this is obviously meant to be understood on a deeper level. The Rabbi Shua Omer Olam Lekuba Udomer, the world is like a tent. The Ruach Tzifonis Misobevis, and the northern side is also included. When the sun reaches the northwest, circles, passes behind the dome of the sky. Shinemar, as it states, Halecha Darom is Ovevel Tzafon, Halecha Darom Bayom, it goes to the south during the day, it's Ovevel Tzafon Balayla, and it circles to the north at night. What does it mean, Sovev, Sovev, Halecha Ruach? What does that mean? Val Svivosav, Shav Ruach. This refers to Elu Pene Mizrach, Upene Marav. This refers to the eastern and western face, Shapamim Misav Basan. Sometimes the sun circles them, Upamim Malachta, and sometimes it goes around them. The Bryce has said, This brings us back to the position of Rabbi Eliezer. Meaning to say, this, the, what the position that follows comes back to the position of Rabbi Eliezer, who says the world is enclosed on three sides and is open in the north. From the inner chamber comes the whirlwind. This refers to the south wind. And from this part, parts is the cold. That's the northern wind. From the breath of God, he gives ice. Zuroch Maravis is the western wind. The Rocha of Mayim and Mutzak, an expanse of the water in a torrent. Zuroch Mizrachis, this is the eastern wind. But didn't we say, How can you say this? Didn't we say that it's the southern wind that brings showers and causes the grass to grow? And now you just said it's the eastern wind. That when the Rains come uh, gently, and one is when Habish Fikusa, and one is when they come in torrents. So when they gently, that's the southern one. When they come in torrents, that's the eastern wind. Amar Rav Kista Maid Elsev. What does it mean when it says in the pasuk, "Mitzfon Zav Yes"? From the north, cold will come. Zuruach Tzafonis. That is the northern wind. Shemazelas Esazav. But it devalues the gold because it makes a famine and causes everybody to spend their money on. Food. Those who spend gold from the purse. From the day the temple was destroyed, the southern wind was not filled with rain. Meaning to say, after the base of Mikdash, we never had the southern wind bring the rain. As it states, by Yigzaral Yamin Viraev. In decrees on the right, and there is hunger. Vayochol al smol v'hus avail. It consumes on the left, and they will not be satisfied. Uksiv tzafon v'yamena tabarasam. North and right, you created them. Yom ha'raf from bar papa ha'raf pesam yom shachar beisam mikdash ena gishanam yordan me'otzer tov. On the day the beisam mikdash was destroyed, the rains do not come down from God's otzer, from a storage house. It says, Yiftach Hashem l'chaz otzer o'atov. It says that Hashem says in the book of Deuteronomy that in the future God will open up his good storehouse. When the Jewish people do the will of God and they're living on their land, then then, then the rains come down from the good storehouse. When they're not living on their on their land. Then English Shalom Yordim Yotzer Tov. Then the rains don't come down. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Harotze 
One who wants to become knowledgeable should face south when he davens. When he wants to become wealthy, he should face north. The way you remember this is the table in the north, and uh, the table is in the north of the base of Mikdash, and that represents the the wealth, Umenorah, which represents the Torah, knowledge, that's Bedaram, that's in the south. Rabbi Shubham Levi Omer, Olam Yadram, you should always turn south while you pray. When you become wise, you'll become wealthy. As it states, Orachem Mim Bimina, Besmoa, Osher, Vikamun. Length of days in your right and your wealth is Osher and Kabod. So this is the idea that the Torah provides wealth as well as wisdom. So, then he says it's in the West. The Gemara says, Mitzadi, that's to the Rabbi Shua Levi is saying that you should turn toward the Southwest when you pray. Southwest. Like us who live in the north of Israel, we should face south and pray towards space and make How do you know that Babylon is in the north of Israel? Babel is really northeast, so this is another problem, but we'll deal with that another time. From the north will come all the bad on the land. And this is the verse, the Torah from Jeremiah, which we see coming down to our, never was there a true, true prophecy in the history of humanity, that from the north the evil shall come upon all the inhabitants of the land of Israel, and that is from the north of Israel. Marchikin is a Mishra and a Yerach. You have to distance the Mishra, the flax, from the vegetables. Rabbi Yossi, Matir Bechardo, Rabbi Yossi, we already had this, Gemara. Rabbi Yossi allows it by the mustard. Sheyach Omar, because the owner of the mustard can say to the owner of the bees, Achetol Merli, Yerachei Kardel Chamed Varayim. Just as like you say to me, get rid of your mustard from my bees, I could say, Yerachei Kvor Chamed Chardelei. I could say to you, get rid of your bees from my mustard. Because they come and they're eating the flowers of my must. We already had them. You have to distance the tree from the pit, 25 amos. And for carob and a sycamore, 50 amos. Whether it's on higher ground or it's on level ground from the side. Let's say the pit came first. Then he has to cut down the tree. And he has to pay him for it. Even though the tree is potentially harmful, he has to pay him for cutting it down because the roots won't damage the pit until much later, as she says. And at the time he put, um, and so at the time he plants it, he's not doing any damage. So the rabbi is therefore uh, said he's entitled to be paid. So then we go on. In my, so we say the Elon called them, but if the tree was first, well Yokots, he doesn't have to cut it down. Sub exec them, sub exec call them well yokots. If you're not sure which came first, he doesn't cut it down. Rabiosi Omer Apopisha Borko Demasli Elon. Rabiosi says, even though the tree came before the uh even though the pig came before the tree, he doesn't cut it down. Shazekho for Batol Shalov is that no tab tol shalov because each one's doing their own property. Tana Ben Shaboro Mata the Ilomala Ben Shaboro Mala. So it's told in the price that it doesn't matter which one's on top and which one's below. I understand if the pit is above and the tree is below, that causes the the roots of the of the tree go and damage the pit. But if the pit is above and the tree is below, why do you have to get rid of the tree? Because the tree is traveling beneath the ground and damaging the floor of the pit. So Rabbi Yosi Omer Apopisha Borko Demes Le'ilon, even though the pit comes before the tree, well, you don't cut it down. Because each one's doing their own property. And I'm Rabbi Yehuda Meshulah, Halachuk Rabbi Yosi. And indeed the law is like Rabbi Yosi. And says Rabbi Ashi, Ki Avon Bayi Rav Kahana, Havamina, and when we were students of Rav Kahana's academy, we would say, Moda Rabbi Yossi Begiri today. Rabbi Yossi agrees that if it's his own arrows doing it directly, then he would be responsible. What's an example of this? What's an example of this? So that will pick up on, uh, um, all right, we'll just finish this story. We'll just do this last story. Papi Yonah, Ani Vashirav, Papi the Yonai. 
was wealthy and uh, he was also, he started off poor and then he became wealthy. Bana Apana, he built a mansion. Havohana Hatsuri Bishibu. So there were those people whose job was to basically, what they were doing is they crushed uh, sesame seeds to make into oil. They were in his neighborhood. Every time they crushed the sesame seeds, they moved his, his house. Also coming to Ravashi, came to Ravashi. Amr Le Ravashi said, that Raviosi admits, even if, if it's a direct arrow. So since it's direct, they have to stop the comma. How much do how much must it move in order for them to stop? Enough that the lid of the barrel will, will shake from the vibrations. Okay, this is today's daf, a beautiful daf. Very beautiful daf. We'll stop here. Shukayah.